The grieving loved ones of Jennings, La, resident Whitney Dubois don't believe she was murdered by a serial killer. The 26-year-old's body was found at a rural crossroads in May 2007. She is one of eight young women known as the Jeff Davis Eight or Jennings Eight, whose remains were discarded in backroads and bayous in rural areas of Jefferson Davis Parish between 2005 to 2009. No one has been convicted in their deaths. It is believed the case may have inspired the HBO series True Detective starring Matthew McConaughey, Colin Farrell and Mahershala Ali. The devastating trail of murder in the small southern town is the subject of a new four-part docuseries on Investigation Discovery ID titled Death in the Bayou, The Jennings Eight, with recent interviews with relatives of the victims, local law enforcement officials and previously apprehended suspects. Brittany Jones, Dubois niece, said she came forward in hopes that the special will raise awareness on the cold case, which she said may have been the work of multiple killers. I think it's more than one, Jones told Fox News. I think it was made to look like it was a serial killer. I think that along the way after the first few girls were found, people felt like because those homicides were not being solved, this was a very easy way to dispose of women and get away with it. But I don't think it's the work of one person. The cause of death varied among the women. Some had their throats slashed while several appeared to have asphyxiated. Others were too decomposed to have the cause of death determined. The victims were black and white, aged 17 to 30, and knew each other within the town of 10,000 residents. Rolling Stone pointed out the victims were living in poverty and had criminal records for drug use and petty crime. The father of Dubois' only child has a brother who is married to Loretta Lynn C. Lewis, whose body was found in 2005. She was 28. The New York Times previously reported that Jennings, long a stopping off point for drug traffickers along Interstate 10, had a growing crack trade. This led many young men to crime and women to prostitution. Jones stressed that their lifestyles may have contributed to why investigators haven't solved the case yet. I do feel like that plays a part in it, she explained. You don't want to think that it's possible for people to think that way. But over the years, especially with social media and news reports, you can observe people's comments and hard words towards these girls. You don't know until you've stepped in those shoes. Until it's one of your family members and so many assumptions, said Jones. There's just so many rumors that involved law enforcement officers. It has put a doubt in everyone's mind. No one knows what to believe, Taylor said that adding to the frustration was the coroner's result for what could have happened to Dubois, a cause of death couldn't be determined. You do this every day and you're a medical professional. Taylor said angrily. There has to be some way that you know foul play was involved or not. An experienced medical examiner or coroner would automatically know if you'd done this for some odd years. Whitney didn't put herself there. None of them did. The two women said that despite relieving their real-life nightmare in front of cameras, they have a glimmer of hope the documentary will encourage anyone with information to finally come forward. It has become easier to deal with the grief because we have accepted the fact that she's gone, said Jones. But it's not any easier to have to deal with not having so many answers, not having any closure, not having any cause of death.